tonight we're going to talk about how to get your child to quit sucking his thumb or sucking his fingers. And these strategies are most helpful for kids who are about oh, almost three years old and of course older. I'm going to give you several different things to think about, but if you're having any difficulty, again, be sure to consult with a certified oral facial myologist or a speech pathologist that specializes in eliminating thumb sucking, because not all of us have that training, and I'm really excited that I do, so I'm glad to share it here with you tonight. Okie doke. Um, the first thing you need to do is really pay attention to when your child is sucking their thumb or their fingers. And I don't just mean, oh, it's usually in the evening or gosh, um, it's before school. I want you to pay attention to the environment itself and whatever triggers it. So here's an example for you. I have a little client right now that she loves to suck her thumb when she's in the car. And part of that is because not just the car, but because she loves to watch movies on her iPad while she's in the car and naturally she's in the back seat because she's little. Well, that's the antecedent or the trigger for her thumb to go into her mouth. What I mean by that is an antecedent is the cue for a behavior to happen. It usually happens right before the behavior. Um, for me, I would say that the antecedent for me to buy way too many cups of Starbucks coffee is every time I drive by and I see that big green circle on the sign that says Starbucks, I suddenly think that I need a latte. But I didn't need a latte just two minutes prior. So it's the visual cue of seeing the Starbucks sign that makes me think, oh, I, I need to buy a latte. Oh, I, I need something to drink. Same thing happens with our kids when they are in certain situations. And for this little girl, she would most often suck her thumb when she got into the car and the video was on, okay? So I want you to think about that with your child too. Does he tend to suck on his fingers when he's getting ready to go to sleep or when he's starting to get a little tired and laying down, maybe watching a video with you? Does he tend to suck on his thumb when he's a little anxious? I've seen a lot of kids as they're starting to go back to school this week. Uh, today I was doing some school visits and a lot of them are chewing on their, their sleeves and their collars to get that oral input. And thumb sucking, finger sucking is no different. All right. Think about what is happening internally for your child. Is he just zoning out, which is when we tend to have habits like that where we bite on our nails? Or is he a little bit anxious and he needs to zone out? He needs to sort of come to a comfort place. A lot of kids will twirl their hair or they'll reach for a blankie or a stuffed animal and they'll often, you ever seen little kids rub that animal up against their nose and just to sort of get really absorbed in what's in front of them? that blocking out of the environment is something we all do when we need to calm down, but we don't want it to come through finger or thumb sucking. Let's talk about why kids are gonna do that. What are they, how do they benefit from that? Besides that it helps them zone out, it also puts pressure right here on the alveolar ridge. And when we press there, it has a calming effect on our brain. Um, it's something that certified oral facial myologists study quite a bit about, and I won't go into a lot of detail here tonight, but that input right here is why that thumb fits so beautifully in that spot. And the problem with that is, is it can change the shape of your child's palate as well as their dentition, and we want them to find more age-appropriate ways to calm and organize their body. Okay, number two. You have to set your child up for success by parenting proactively. So have the following strategies in place wherever you think that trigger or that antecedent may occur. Let's keep talking about the example of in the car, watching a DVD or a video of some sort. If we're gonna change this habit, you've gotta give me at least 30 days consistently, consistently 30 days, of no DVDs, no videos in the car. And I know that's really hard, but that's the trigger for your child. And the beauty of that is, 
that when they're not absorbed in that video, they can be talking to you. And when the kids are talking to you, they're very unlikely to put their fingers or their thumb in their mouth because they're talking. So what I want you to do is go and look in your car and disconnect the DVD player or don't let them take the iPad in there. Make sure that maybe you can put a little sticky note on the dash of your car with three fun topics that you're going to start talking to them about so that it keeps their anxiety down and they aren't as likely to put that in their mouth. Their mouth. Help them break that habit. The other thing that's really helpful is to give them something else to chew because kids need that oral input in order to organize their body. We're all like that. It's the same reason why when I was taking my graduate school exams, I was chewing <laughs> the end of my pen like crazy. I never chew my pen, but when I'm taking a test or I'm uptight, I don't know if any of you do this too, I'm chewing on it. It helps me think. I um, am a big fan of letting kids chew gum during test, test taking, but also for my children who are trying to eliminate a habit like chewing their nails or, or sucking on a thumb, I teach them to chew gum if they're over the age of three because we want to be conscious of choking. So that's something you might want to parent proactively and first teach them how to chew gum before you tackle this habit. Definitely, as I said, give them something to chew on. And I want to show you what my, um, my favorite products are for that. There are a lot of different ones out there. But I love these Kids Companions or Sentio Chews necklaces. Now, um, these are by the same company. I'll put the link in the comments for you. I love them because they both have these breakaway necklaces so the kids are always safe. And they can wear them around their neck. The Sentio Chew, which is their other product line, is a little bit, it's more for super duper chewers, the ones that are really good in there, and really, really sturdy and still has that breakaway lanyard. It comes in 18 inches, which is nice for a lot of our kids, but you could certainly shorten it if you wanted to. Okay, let's talk about how to do this then. What you want to do is... The first thing is, when you order these, I want you to order a pack of five. Get them in all different colors if you'd like, so they can have something to match their outfits. They come in, um, oh, I hate to even say boys and girls styles, because if your little, little girl wants to wear a soccer ball, that's so cool. And if your little boy wants to wear a pink heart, that's awesome. But they come in a variety of styles, is my point. And um, you want your child to pick one out in the morning, and more importantly, you're going to wear one too. That is key. And I would love it if you would give one to the preschool teacher or the daycare worker to wear one as well. That's theirs to keep. They're easily washable. And what you do is when the kids put them on, the reason why you're going to put one on is because the kids can't see the one that they have on. It's no different than if you said, Mel, those are really cute earrings. You know what I would do? I'd go, Oh, thanks. My husband gave me these. But I literally have to stop and feel them to remember which ones I have on. Well, little kids are the same way. If they just have their necklace on or you've attached a chewy with a clip, they can't see it and they don't think to put that in their mouth first. But when it comes time to be aware of that trigger, in this example, getting in the car with that DVD player, the very first thing you're going to do is put that chewy in your teeth and say something like, I feel like I need to chew. And now they're seeing you do it and they'll think to do it as well. Make sure brothers, sisters, um, anybody else around the family also has one and learns to model this for the child. Okay. So give them something else to chew. These happen to be some of my favorite products, but there are plenty of options out there for you. Um, Make sure that instead of saying, oh, we don't suck our thumb, try to give them more of the positive bent on that. Try something like, oh, you can chew on your necklace. Oh, it looks like you need to chew. I've got my necklace too. I think I need to chew on it as well. Or, oh, you know what? You're chewing. It looks like maybe you need a piece of gum. What flavor do you want? Make it positive because you are going to be reminding the child a lot in the next 30 days. And we always want those interactions to be um, uh, friendly and positive for our children. Okay. The other thing I want you to think about is 
are there other times where maybe the child just goes into a state where they don't even realize they have the thumb in their mouth and that's often bedtime. You could certainly do this throughout the day too, but when it comes to bedtime, let me give you two strategies to help kids not suck their thumb in their sleep. The first one that I do right away with kids when they're having trouble with digit sucking is I get a white sock. Um, I like a, wa a white one because we're gonna make it into a sock puppet. Now, you wanna be careful when you're making this with the kids, you're not gonna put like little pom-poms for eyes because they might start chewing on those in the middle of the night. We don't want anybody to choke. So just use some safe colored markers or um, uh, even maybe just a little bit of embroidery thread that you knot really well. Give your puppet a couple eyes, um, however you wanna make it. You, I, one little boy made a dragon for him because he loved dragons and they can wear the sock at night. Here's a tip for you though. You want the kids not to be able in their sleep to pull it off. So in that case, what you're gonna do is once you make the puppet for them, afterwards, take it off and right where the ribbing is, take a piece of Velcro and sew it here and sew it here and take your little Velcro tab and not too tight, but just tighten it up so that in the middle of the night when they go to pull, this will stop it from going off their wrist. It'll hold it, but it won't cut off circulation. That's the beauty of the Velcro. If you need two um, hands covered in sock puppets, that's fine too. But many kids will only suck one thumb. And you'll often see a change in their face and their musculature because they are using one thumb over the other. So take a look at your kid's face, see how symmetrical it is. See if perhaps that thumb sucking is starting to influence the shape of the palate enough that it is actually starting to change the musculature as well. That's good motivation to stop this habit for you. All right, the other thing I wanna to talk to you about is possibly putting a Band-Aid or some other sort of wrap on your child's thumb. If you're going to choose a Band-Aid, you have to choose one that if they happen to put the thumb in their mouth, won't come off and won't, they wouldn't choke on it. Um, the best ones to use are these big ones that we all use when we get a blister on our heel. Don't get any that have um, an antibiotic or anything like that in there and make sure you get one that's latex free because the kids will tend in their sleep to put the thumb in their mouth. And then just make sure that when you wrap the thumb that you also fold over the top and you have a nice tight seal. Make sure you change this in the morning or take it off entirely if you don't think you need it during the day and check every 24 hours to make sure that there's um, not too much moisture under there. You really want to be careful of that. Now, if you want, you can also use something like Coband or this, this um, elastic bandage that we all see nowadays at the doctor's office. It works great. Just make sure that you have it on there really securely, not too tight to cut off circulation so that that child can't actually take it off with their teeth. You're gonna bandage all the way down. And if, if you want to, and if you feel comfortable that you know how to do this without cutting off any circulation, you could actually go around their palm to secure that. Just be very, very careful. I would do it on yourself first to make sure you really know what it feels like so there's no discomfort involved. It's easy to make it too tight, so you wanna be careful of that. Alrighty. Last point, and then we're gonna take questions. So if you have any questions for me, whether it has to do with feeding therapy, picky eating, thumb sucking, don't hesitate to put them in the comments and I'll answer those in just a few minutes. All right, I want you to think about other objects that trigger your child to suck their thumb. It could be if a child has long hair, they start to twirl their hair and the thumb goes right in their mouth or it could be their blankie or an animal. It could be your hair. A lot of times you'll hold your little one, maybe even your preschooler in your lap, and you're reading them a bedtime story and they feel your hair, they start to twirl your hair and that thumb goes right in their mouth. We get so used to that sort of thing that we just don't even realize they're doing it. So really do your best to pay attention because what you're gonna to have to do is again, parent proactively and think to yourself, you know what? I'm gonna put my hair in a ponytail before I read them that book so that that doesn't trigger the need to suck their thumb. If the child needs to suck on something in the crib, 
at this age, we don't want it to be a pacifier and we don't want it to be a sippy cup, but you can get a spill proof thermos, the kind with the pop-up straw, or um, I will put an article in the comment section on different, uh, different spouts that are spill proof in the bed. And that way the child can drink a little bit of water throughout the night and satisfy that sucking need. I promise you it's going to be a rough three or four nights. It is on everybody, but you will get through it and it'll get better each night. So the sooner you start, the easier it'll go. Okay. Um, I also just quickly want to mention that if you are listening and you have a child who perhaps is nonverbal, who has some expressive receptive um, language challenges, please take this video to your speech therapist and talk to them about how you could adapt some of these strategies for your child's specific needs. And then also, if your child's seeing an occupational therapist, yay OTs, we love them, um, make sure that you talk to your OT as well. Because a lot of times the OT can come up with strategies to help that child regulate his body before he gets in the car and isn't able to have his thumb that he's used to. I have a client right now who has an old mini trampoline in the garage. And before they get into the car, which is his trigger to start sucking, he jumps on that many, many times while mom's kind of getting the car ready and putting everything in the car. And then he climbs into his car seat and gets buckled in. That was his OT suggestion to help him regulate and be ready to transition to not sucking his thumb in the car. 